We are, I think we're live. We are live. Yay. Had to wait for a little spinning thing to go on there. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Beer with Claude. Um, drinking my little Heineken here. Uh, good Dutch beer. Really like the Dutch beer. Um, it's just kind of a fun get together. I, I do every Friday. Um, love talking to you guys about real estate, beer, food, uh, lifestyle, kind of one of my themes tonight, two things I wanted to talk to you about. And by the way, if you do want to join um, uh, with us in the group here, um, I have just posted the um, uh, link here and somebody popped up already, my, bu my buddy Jose. Hi, Claude. How are you? Como esta? Muy bien, muy bien. Sound. Uh-oh. Okay. Can hear you. Oh, hey. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. I think it was okay. my bad, not yours. How are you? Are you suffering from helmet hair like I am? Yeah, yes. sort of. <laughs> um, the one thing I really miss is getting regular haircuts, but well, until this uh, pandemic is over, you know. I know I need one. So, so. God, so do I. Uh, really. Yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah. I still have a full head of hair. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Um, you know, good, good genes, good genes. It is. I, I, you know, absolutely. And good science. And I, I listen, I did one of the smartest things on my list of smart. I married a nurse, <laughs> marry, a, marry nurses for a lot yeah. of reasons, but they'll keep you healthy. <laughs> my wife makes me a big old salad every night before dinner and a big old a fresh bowl of fruit salad every night for dessert. Cause I love dessert. Do you and have great steak, steak? Oh yeah, sure I do. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yeah. I've done the carnivore thing, the yeah, fast yeah. food thing. I've done the vegan, vegetarian thing, and now I I think I'm a true omnivore. I eat a lot of fresh. Um, I eat one meal a day. Um, I drink liquids all day long: black coffee, uh, club soda, Perrier water. Uh, so I don't get hungry during the day, so I just don't eat. That's called the OMAD diet, one meal a day. Mm -hmm. And um, then I um, we have a normal meal at dinner, but we eat very healthy. Like I said, a big a big old salad. You know when you have a big salad before your regular meal? Guess what happens oh, yeah, to your yeah. appetite? It diminishes your appetite tremendously. Mm -hmm. I love salads. I love Tavares. I like the variation of, of salads that they offer. Yeah, and, oh, uh, yeah. Panera is nice. Here, let me show you. In fact, I went through a. Uh, here's what we're. Tell me if you could. Can you see that screen? No, no. Oh, you can't. Well, which screen? The little on the right hand corner. Uh, you should be able to see this on your screen right now. Okay. Okay, may I didn't hit the share button. That was my bad. Okay. okay. I that can see what, that. Yeah. This is what we're having for dinner tonight. Wow, pimientos. Uh, stuff stuff, peppers. stuff pimientos, yes. <laughs> my, my house smells so good. <laughs> I mean, and my wife is a great cook. Uh, and so, so that's that's what we're having for that's what we're uh, having for, the, for dinner tonight. That's making me hungry. Oh yeah, yeah, you Jason. Did you see one? Jason? Did you see what I'm having for dinner tonight? Is that like stuffed cabbage or something? It's stuffed the same thing. It's stuffed yeah. peppers, but it's uh, we use buffalo and and rice, wow. and you cook them in a crock pot all day long in tomato sauce. And yeah, that sounds delicious. We, and I'm in, I've been in a snowstorm literally for two days here. Um, I went skiing today. That's why I got this helmet hair here. And um, it's kind of sad. Um, and I'll show you a little picture of the skiing and stuff that we're having right now. This I'm in Winter Park, Colorado. This is called a life without compromise. Well, two things I really love. Uh, I, I love living in the mountains, uh, uh, going skiing and, and hiking and everything. But I also love San Diego, where it's really warm and In-N-Out Burger is there. And uh, my good, my favorite brewery, uh, Ballast. By the way, um, mm. salute. Salute. You know, my La Jaya, every Oh, Modelo, good beer. A good Mexican yeah, beer. Yeah, nice, nice beer. Yeah, and um, it's uh, been going. And kind of sad news. Um, we've had um, I, on Monday or Tuesday three 
three fellows who knew each other from a small town here in Colorado, Brighton. Uh, they got killed in an avalanche. We've got that much snow here right now. Oh. Um, and then I just got a message that someone else just died yesterday in an avalanche in the same area in Vail. You uh, be careful. You be careful out there. Oh, yeah. I, I do ski in the trees and stuff like that, but I don't go in the back country. These are diehard people. Mm -hmm. And they go into the, they climb up with their skis. Okay. Um, or they have a friend take them up in a snowmobile sometimes. And they go into places where nobody else goes because it's powder. Mm -hmm. They're powder hounds. Mm -hmm. And they go skiing in this stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes this snow piles up and it's different temperatures, different levels, different types of snow. And the whole shelf just drops on them. And they're, mm -hmm. you're gone. Mm -hmm. You're gone. Right here, I'll show, let me show you. Um, let me share a little uh, screen with you guys here. Uh, let's do this. I'll do this. Hit my share. I'm just trying to learn how to use this share screen here. Okay. Whoops. You got a beautiful mic there. Oh, it's a good mic. It's it's one of the yeah. best. Here, check uh, check this out a little bit here. This is what it looks like. Oh. Isn't that I mean, this is what I was skiing in today and yesterday. Oh. I mean, there's so much powder right now. Hmm. Man, you must have at least 12 inches on that <laughs> powder. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, I like, I'm glad you finished that sentence. Oh, we have, <laughs> I, think we, I think we have over 14 to 18 inches, depending where you go. Yeah. This is what I like to do. I like to go in the trees here. Wow. Um, just like this. And that, just guy doesn't have, that guy has boots on? Yellow oh, yeah. boots. Oh, yeah. You see it all. I've seen people in shorts and T-shirts you know, when it's 20 degrees, man. That could really well, hurt the tree if you stuff, the, tree. the tree stuff looks dangerous because that tree comes up real fast on you. Yeah. Yeah. That would really, that would really uh, this, hurt this, for sure. Yeah, you, well, you avoid the trees. That's that's a good thing to do. So avo always avoid the trees. Um, I definitely avoid the trees. I'm um, here. Uh, well, were you out there a couple hours today? Uh, yeah, um, about what, what she, 11.30 to 2.30, something like that. Three hours tops, oh, okay. two hours, 45 minutes. It was cold and nasty today, but if when there's powder out there, you love going back out. And then, man, I couldn't wait to go home and take the hottest bath I've ever, I was, it was cold, you know, uh, absolutely. But I was talking about a life without compromise. What do you, what does that mean to you guys? Uh, you know, to me, it means living, uh, I've always, uh, to be debt free and living where you want to live. It, and yeah. that's the definition of, of living life to the max. Living to my, uh, not accepting mediocrity as a standard. Right. Um, you know, setting certain, re setting reasonable goals. I, mm. I talk to people all the time and they say, and I say, what's your goal? Oh, I want to be a millionaire, Claude. And I, I said, well, where are you right now? And, well, I don't have two nickels to rub together. <laughs> and, um, and I'll go, well, why don't we take, why don't we set little baby steps first? And, you know, you, nobody just, unless you win the lottery, nobody goes from broke to millionaire. They're little baby steps. Mm. Uh, I, my first goal Honestly, I uh, was in law school. We we're mar you know, married. We had a we had a baby. Um, we watched every penny. My wife was working. She was a nurse, and um, I just set a goal. I all I wanted was that extra thousand dollars a month. That's all I wanted. Just be just because it was just what it gave us, you know, and get out of that more month than money phase. And I mm. got there. I got there because I had a great mentor. I was in real estate. I was doing it in Southern California. And um, 1000 a month, eventually, because um, I was doing all, I was doing everything. Uh, I still do it today. Uh, people always ask me, uh, gee, don't you have a lot of uh, virtual assistants? And how do you scale your business and everything like that? I love that question. How do I scale my business? Um, I pick up the phone. I make phone calls. I talk to people every day. That's how I scale my business. I uh, really, I have two guys, I have two independent contractors who make phone calls for me and set up appointments. That's it. Mm. That, that's, that's all I, that's all I do. Um, I wanted to get from that a thousand a month 
Then it went to 1,500, then 2,500, then 5,000, then 10,000, then 25,000 a month. And it's it's been growing. Mm. And I, I always attribute it to uh, sales. Hey, we got another friend here all the way from Maryland. Mr. Nick, my Hawaiian buddy. Hi, Nick. We see you. <laughs> mm. Excuse me. This is beer with Claude. This is where I get to eat my munchies, my peanuts, pistachios, and almonds, and my beer. Nick, get a beer, man. It's a pride. No sound. You're you're muted. You're gonna have to do something over there and unmute yourself. Let me think. So what's what's a life without compromise? What do you what's that mean to you guys, Jason? We talked earlier today. Uh, to me, life without compromise is just make living life on your own terms. Oh, I like that. Life on your own terms. Define. Go deep. Uh, just not being overly concerned about money or the ups and downs in the economy and just being confident in, in your abilities to, uh, to, to do what it takes to make the sale. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Living life on your own terms. And I think most people have reasonable terms. Mr. Thinker's got his PBR. I love PBR. I don't care what any, I think it's a good beer, man. It's a good, cheap American lager. Is nothing wrong with it. I like PBR. Ready to rock, uh, baby boy, Claude. Say happy Friday to you, Mr. Thinker. Um, Jose, we'll go to you. Then we'll go to Nick. Well, it just means to me that you can uh, live the way the way you want to live, where you want to live, and however you want to live. It's the freedom to be able to break away. I unfortunately realized that late stage in the game. OK, you know, I was already in my 50s when I started to think about, hey, I think I'm doing this all wrong. I wish I had started earlier. And so but once you set your tracks, you don't want to live with regret. You, you, don't, you, you oh, know what I'm saying? I like that. You want to live, you you know, you no regret living a life with no regret. No regrets. Right. You know, yeah, that's. I think, and that goes, in my mind, that goes to millionaire thinking. Right. Um, I always say impatience is a virtue, not patience. I, I disagree completely with Gary Vaynerchuk, who says we're not patient enough and everything. I think patience is bullshit. Um, I think <laughs> just go go for it. You, gotta, you went on a good date and you got a pretty girl in front of you, kiss her. She's either going to kiss you back or slug you. You got you to gotta find out, right? <laughs> Okay, you got, you got to go. Patience. Uh, ask for the order. Okay, yeah. I ask people for the order every day. A lot of people say no to me. And they'll say, well, I want to think about it. No, you're not allowed to think about it. I made you an offer now. You can say no to me. Maybes, probably, should have, could have. I got to talk to this person and that person. I got to think about it. That doesn't work in my universe. Time, you don't want to, I don't want to waste a minute of a God-given life. Mm. I think that's a compromise. Oh yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, we'll talk next week sometime. That's that's mm. BS to me. Mm. Yeah, listen, you got the problem. You're living in your grandmother's attic with five chihuahuas. Okay, you got no privacy. It's cold up there. You came to me. You got a problem. Do we want to solve it today, or is it over? You know. Well, I don't move that fast. Well, I do. <laughs> is that aggressive? Is that arrogant? Let's, we'll go to Nick here. Hey, my buddy Michael Buckles is, uh, is hanging out there. Michael, come join us, man. Always good to see you. Michael in Atlanta, Georgia. What do you think about what do you think about that arrogance, Nick? Well, you know, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now you're good. Now you're good. Where's your so lovely he, wife? She's uh over there. <laughs> Where's your lovely, she's, much younger wife? Much younger. That's that's <laughs> what keeps me young, right? You really? My wife is younger than me. She, she, <laughs> you know, just because you get older doesn't mean you have to be a fart. That's true. You know, it's funny. I got to thinking about, um, you know, how I thought when I was 40 and how I think now at the age of 63 is like, <laughs> I came from a long line of blue collar workers that, you know, when I thought about making more money, I had to work more hours. You know, it was my, my work days and where, between 12 and 14 hours and 
you know, I drove a truck for a living. So I was on the road all the time. It, it was, it, it was a tough life. I enjoyed driving the truck. I just hated the hours that I had to be away. Mm. So, you know, as I've gotten older and especially since I've been with Suzette, things have started to change for me. I got to admit, I'm slow at changing, <laughs> but, uh, you know, as I said to you the other day, I don't have to be a millionaire, but I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to sleep late if I want to sleep late, eat the food that I want to eat, take an occasional vacation. It, you know, it's like, I just want my life, you know, I figure I'm about two thirds done with my life and I want that last oh, third man. to be. Oh, 63, is know, the, 63 is the new 36, man. Well, I, I mean, I expect to go oh, into, there you go. <laughs> I expect to go into my nineties, hopefully. So, uh, Claudia's wanna, mom. Claudia's mom is 94 years old. She lives in her, she lives in Pinehurst. Wow. And we spend time also. She works for Habitat for Humanity. She does a garden every day. She drives, she's her beloved Toyota van. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, the woman can drink Glen Fittich. She, she can <laughs> she can open up a bottle of Glen Fittich and drink me under the table. That's I mean, I'm... and she's sharp, she's sharp as a whip. I mean, you know, everything's yeah. Everything's still cooking there. I mean, there's uh, the uh, the tables are changing. Hey, Claude, you want to be able to ski at eighty, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you could do it. You you run ten miles a day. I want to ski, make love, drink beer. I want to do everything at eighty or ninety. Mm -hmm. I want you know. I, to me, we talk. Somebody's hitting their microphone a lot. Is that, who is that? Okay, Nick, that might have been you because um, it stopped now. Um, you know, the thing is, it's not about how long you live. It's the quality. I, if I feel as good in my last day on the planet as I feel today, I've got nothing to complain about. That's that's My feeling is I just want to be healthy to my last day. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be set. I don't want to be in a nursing home dribbling somewhere. Good goal. That's you a know. good goal. Good goal. It is. It is. You know, that's that's you know, that's uh, life with uh, that's that's my goals. That's the things I want. So I work really hard on my health and stuff like that. I, you know, I take it pretty serious. Uh, absolutely. Do you do, you do, um, do you do any do you do any caffeine, Claude? Like anything that's caffeinated? Um, I drink a um, I drink a half and ha uh, half decaf, half half regular coffee in the morning. I have two cups of coffee. Yeah, you keep it on the down low. That's, that's kind of the general we mix up. I'm sorry, say again. I was just going to say that's kind of the general health consensus, I guess. I'm glad to hear you said that. Yeah, I don't. Uh, caffeine's <laughs> never bothered me. I've never overindulged in caffeine. I don't think caffeine's that bad. I don't overdo yeah. sugar. Um, I don't do too many processed foods, although I have a tremendous weakness for In N Out Burger. <laughs> okay. Well, I think everything in moderation. You know, I think it's okay. I don't want to live a. I don't want to live a life where I'm just uh, eating tofu for the rest of my life or something oh. like. That. <laughs> I think moderation. Yeah, you know that. That's the. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm. You ever, you ever um, uh, read, uh, watch Dr. Jason Fung on YouTube? He's um, a, ne a nephrologist from uh, Canada. And everything. And he says, you know what? We don't need to eat 10 meals a day. We don't need to do all the snacking. He said, we, you know, we could skip breakfast. We could skip lunch if we want. We don't have to eat all day long. Our body doesn't well, need it. Go ahead. That, is that why you fast? Is that why you fast until five o'clock every day or whatever it is you do? I, I took me a long time to, I think everybody has to find what works for them. I've always had trouble with my weight going up and down and up and down. And what really worked for me was just not eating. Um, no, no snacks. No, I, I just I have my coffee in the morning. I drink a lot of water and and green tea and stuff during the day. Um, and five o'clock, I usually have my first beer, and and then I have a very normal dinner, like I said, you know, with a big salad and a big uh, big fruit salad for dessert and stuff. Pretty, and I usually I'll eat steak or burgers or fit a lot of fish. Mac uh, ma macaroni, you know, I'll eat a pretty normal diet, uh, but I'll only have that one meal a day. And that's, man, that just works for me. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Dr. Fung talks a lot about, um, you know, insulin. Uh, it's not about calories in and out. It's about controlling your hormones. So you don't, did you ever eat a meal and you were right away hungry, like 15, 20 minutes after you got off the table and you were hungry all over again? Mm -hmm. you, know, that, you know, that's your body through millions of years of evolution saying, no, there's plenty more ice cream in the refrigerator. Go eat it. It's good for you. <laughs> we'll, we'll pack it away. Your body's like a freezer that loves to store food for in case there's a famine coming. And you know, really, civilized man has only been here a couple thousand years. We we're descended from some uh, other species and people who didn't have a who didn't have a refrigerator. Mm. So your body works against you all the time. Speaking of speaking of heavenly bodies, here's Lou Quinal. How you doing, Lou? Hey, Lou. Good, good, good. Heavenly body, huh? All right. <laughs> was that a was that a was that a segue or what, man? Yeah, that was a great one. Yeah, um, I have some. Um, I have a file of mind maps. Some of, I, I, um, I don't know if you guys want to see them. I was going to go through them real quick. I love mind maps. Is anybody here ever do mind maps to help them learn or to remember great ideas or projects? I'm starting. I'm getting a program for that because I think that I want to be able to write them to the way I think and, and what I want to remember. I am, um, where is it? I write things down all the time. I have a uh, little notebooks, um, uh, composition books, anything. Uh, I scribble notes on piece of paper. I write ideas and things down because I don't want to lose them. I don't want to forget them. Mm. Um, same thing with mind maps um, and uh, Venn diagrams, um, little circles that intersect for you know, also another way to save ideas. So I've always done that. And um, like if I'm going to write a new book or start a new package or pro my lease purchase package, my gut sales, my consulting packages, all of them started with a mind map. I throw all the ideas. What do I want in this package? Audio, video, uh, PDF, written word. And then I break it down into subcategories. Okay, what were the topics or the chapter titles that I wanted? Uh, what were the title names of the videos I wanted to do? And on one sheet, I got everything organized right in front of me. And that works for me. Hmm. Does anyone else do anything similar? I use, I use a note-taking a note -taking app. I'm just trying to remember the name of it here. It's called uh, RemNote. It allows you to condense lists. Like Apple, yeah. Tell us about. It. Is it does it work on your phone too? Is it? Yeah, you can do it on your phone or you can do it on online. But basically, it just allows you to to do drop down lists. So like you can have your heading and then have a drop, you know, a collapsible list uh, list below it. Okay. That's that's why I use it. And then you can if you're trying to practice. Uh, if you're trying to practice sales, you can split it into like the objection and then what and then you can have the you know ideal answer below it, like kind of like the gut style answer below it. And then if you're stuck when you're practicing it, you can always just flip it down. I use something um here, Holly, I can even show you guys. I'll do this and um Here's one I have on my weight uh, for and health maintenance, uh, fasting. Uh, here's a thing on uh, guts, on my notes. It's Evernote. Yeah. Uh, well, Evernote I also use, but this is called Notes. And, oh, and this yeah. is, like yeah, and this is just, uh, just a great, uh, I got my agreements and contracts in there. Uh, I even have mind maps and outlines in there. Oh, in fact, here's um, here's a here's a good old mind map. So I put I put uh, all of my notes, outlines, things like that, right in here. Um, and it 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 um, okay. Let's stop the screen sharing. And um, that's really handy. It's on my laptop. If you have a Mac computer, it's called Notes. I also use Evernote. Um, Evernote is fantastic. I put all my leads in there, my contracts. Uh, Evernote is a phenomenal, Evernote, the great thing about Evernote is 
it synchronizes in all your other devices, your iPad, <laughs> your iPhones, and your, lap uh, and your laptop. I have a MacBook Pro, which I really like. What are you drinking there, Lou? What do we have today? I am drinking uh, Ipanema Novo Brazil, San oh, Diego. Novo Brazil. Do me a favor. That's that brilliant. It's a brilliant Brazilian uh, brewery right in the East Lake there, right? Yep. Tell, yep. tell everybody, I need 30 seconds to go grab another beer. Tell everybody about the great beer at Novo. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a Brazilian uh, uh, brewery, uh, relatively new to uh, our area, uh, Chula Vista, uh, the East Lake area. And well, it's been here, I don't know, maybe five years now, but it's relatively new. Uh, they were at one location. They just moved to a, a major mall, uh, and now they're offering food. And it's really, it's, it's, the food's great. Uh, beer is great. Um, I haven't been drinking a lot of beer because Claude knows that I have gout, and so if I drink too much, I'm in pain. So I just drink a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. That Novo Brewery, I never even knew Brazilians were, uh, I guess every country is, is famous for their beer. Um, but this was a Brazilian brewery, and their some of their beers are really, uh, really unique. They even have another outlet now in that uh, beautiful shopping mall in uh, Chula right. Vista. Uh, what's that big outdoor mall called? That's uh, uh, Otay Ranch Mall. Mm -hmm. It's an Otay outside... It's an outside. How do you describe that mall? It's an outside California shopping mall where you can just walk yeah, all yeah. around. You're outside. Mm, outdoor, yeah. It's, uh, you can think about a, uh, you know, like, you know, when you drive along the freeway and you see those uh, those open malls. What do you call those guys? Um, swap me. Like a swap, swap me? <laughs> no, not a swap me. No, but, no, no, you're but this is a high today. high yeah, end. It's a really high end mall. Yeah, it's a, it's got end. all the really nice stores, and you, know, you know the places with the three hundred, four hundred dollar um, Maui gym sunglasses and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, but you know yeah, they've been they've been searching these past couple of years. I mean, you know, with well, obviously COVID, right? And then uh, we had that crash in two thousand eight. That they came in about like two thousand seven. They opened up two thousand seven. Then we had the crash in two thousand eight. So they were struggling. <clears throat> Uh, but what they've done uh, is they uh, sold some of their lots on the outskirts of it, and now they're building condos. Those where those six hundred dollar six hundred thousand condos are, right, right there. So you can, if you live there, you don't have to go that far to shop. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then my beer, my beer is exploding here. I threw it in the freezer. Uh, and it's like eru er erupting right now. I've got some other. Oh. How's it? How's things in California? Is it warmed up? Is it seventy five yet? No, not yet. We're at uh, probably around sixty five. Today it's a little bit cold. Cold for us, not for you East Coasters. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't have like no coming up the door. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's we're 50 looking, in at, Maryland we're today. looking at a new snowstorm starting this weekend. Oh, I feel so sad for you at 65. That's warm for us where I'm from. So, that's, <laughs> I a, know. that's a nice warm yeah. for me. Right now, I've yeah. got uh, it's just been snowing for two days here, and the wind's picking up and everything, and it's it's really blowing here right now. Anyway, um, I want to show you guys some of my secret mind maps. Would you like to see that for a minute? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for saying yes. Hey Claude, do you have the Apple Watch? Like this? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what's great about the Apple Watch? Um, the, I go out running, and I used to take my iPhone with me, and I thought, oh, this is great. You know, I can make phone calls and I can listen to music and podcasts and everything like that. And today, this seems heavy to me. All I do is I take my earbuds or whatever they called and my right. watch. Right. And I've actually received, I've actually made money on runs because I can take phone calls through this watch. Wow. Okay, for an extra, I don't know, it's 10 bucks a month. 
Yeah, it's your cell phone. All your calls from your cell phone, even though you're not carrying it, are forwarded to your watch. How cool is that? Nice. That is cool. That's awesome. Let me um, share with you guys. Let me hit my share button here. Share screen. Okay, that, that. Tell me if you can see my mind map. Yep. Yep. These are some of the mind maps. Ask for everything, expect nothing, and have the guts to see what happened. Want to get – how do you become lucky? I made a mind map on how to get lucky. <laughs> not, the, not the one you guys are thinking about, okay? <laughs> Study the lucky ones. Be social. Keep KISS method. Keep it simple. Uh, failure is a lesson to success. Uh, lose the losers. Get SD, GSD. Get stuff done. <laughs> Um, all the good stuff here. Be an optimist, hustle smart. Um, that was one. That was one I did here. Uh, let's get it. Let's get another one here. Oh, uh, guts openers. This is a good one. Um, what are some openers you can say to people? You guys can see my screen, right? Yes. But why do we use pattern interrupts? Why do we use openers? Why are openers better than reading a script? Anybody have an idea? Extemporaneous. You don't have to memorize scripts. Yes. But why, when I say an opener or a pattern interrupt, how is that, isn't that, how does that create a better selling environment, or at least get your foot in the door, as it, opposed to your competition? It throws the, the customer off balance. And when you're throwing him off balance, you're not sounding like the other 10. Yeah. I have a solution. Hey, how do you spell your name? I got the paperwork in front of me. Sorry it took me so long to get back to you. Hey, I heard you have a problem. Hey, good news, Mr. Prospect. So a lot of, a lot of different things. Got some background noise going on. Someone's on the phone. Um, let's see. That's a good one. Oh, Common Sense Millionaire. Here's one I've never, show, I've never shown these to anybody. These are just some different ones. Big idea, big ideas. Refi. What they don't teach at school. Mm. The secret. Develop good financial habits. How we did it. Embrace common sense. Be superb in sales. Your own business. Pay off the house, lower monthly expense, live less, own your own business. No third party buy mortgage programs. <laughs> I, I remember that was used to be a big thing. Hmm. Benefits, things like that. Let me get another one here. Psychological <laughs> sales triggers. These are all the sales triggers that uh, work. Reciprocity, that's you scratch my back. I'll scratch yours, right? I know you, guilt. How about scarcity? That's my favorite. Uh, do you guys use scarcity when you're selling? Oh, yeah. All the time. How about consistency? Are we consistent in our approach to our marketing? Getting commitments from the prospects. Getting attention up front. Getting the yes. <laughs> Oops. Don't need that. Create your own environment. Nurturing, mm -hmm. liking, stroking, story, similar experiences. Authority figure, got Judge Judy there. I always like her. Social proof. Mm -hmm. Anybody using social proof in their sales? Mm -hmm. Materialism, keeping up. Materialism envy. That's a psychological trigger too. Someone's got some background. Someone's got some background noise that's coming through. I don't know who it is. Jason, hit your mute for a second. That was it. it was you, Jason? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was something? There was some noise in the background coming through. Um, contracts. There's a there's a good one. 
What should be in a what should be in a good contract? I might have used this on a Monday. What are the contents of a good contract? What are the strategies? Why do we use contracts? Different clauses, indemnity, entire uh, agreement, severability, legal oh, the legal clauses. Very good stuff. Right of assignment, most important thing you can have in a contract if you're in real estate or a wholesale real estate. Uh, the guts eviction, the technology I use, prospectus. I make up a little mind, how to get 1,632 quality leads in 96 hours. It was something um, that uh, really surprised the hell out of me um, that happened uh, last year. Um, what's another good one here? Are we asking the right questions? Why do we ask questions? How do we become a more effective communicator? Can we walk into a room of people and get people to like you? Can you engage people in conversations? What kind of questions should you ask? Open, closed, general yes, no questions, assertive questions. Multiple choice questions are really good. Multi uh, redirection questions. We talk a lot about that. You don't really want to do. You don't want to do. A, you don't want to do business today, Mister Prospect. Even if I had a solution for you, and the thing I'm still teaching and working on is hypnotic sales, painting an emotional picture in their mind. Let's imagine for a moment. Let's pretend. Can you see yourself? What happens when you? Uh, can we use a form of hypnosis in sales? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? You think we can use hypnosis in sales? That's a topic for you. If what you, do you do guys it legally. If you make, I mean legally. If you do it. <laughs> well, you know, you don't want him jumping. You don't want to do you don't want to be uh, what's his name? The guy who uh the wolf of Wall Street. Oh, Jordan Belford? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, there's a scene in the movie. You know that scene where he's in the boiler room and he's selling that stock to that guy? And he, mm -hmm. and he says something like, yeah, you could pay off your mortgage with this one mm -hmm. penny stock and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I take it a little bit further. When, I'm taught, when I find somebody with a pain or a need or a greed, I try to paint a picture in their mind. And I try to – and I, I tell a story – and in that story or the picture I'm painting, I try to incorporate the five senses, taste, touch, hearing, smell, sight, everything. What do they do when we see a, when we see what, when we see a, a, a commercial on TV, a food commercial, what do they do? What do they do? Uh, what's the one uh, where you, um, oh God, the one in California. When you bite, the guy's biting into the burger. Help me out, Lou. It's uh, Carl Jr.'s. When you bite it, I think. Carl Jr. They're biting into that big old burger, and the sauce yeah. is coming out on his face and down his arm and everything. And you hear the crunch of the lettuce and the cheese and the meat and everything. And you're watching them bite into I don't know if they still have that commercial. It was Carl Jr.'s. And yeah, they, what happened? They, they, yeah. Go ahead. yeah, they don't play they don't play that often. But yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That was back in the nineties. <laughs> what, what, happens when we, what happens when we see somebody eat some delicious food on TV? Oh, man. We start to salivate. And, you know, I, I think I had to go, to go outside and get some Carl's Jr. hamburgers. Yeah. yeah. Anyone here ever been influenced by a commercial or someone talking about something, um, food or something like that, and it was in your mind all day long, like a bad song you couldn't get out of your head? Yep. That's a form of what we call conversational hypnosis. Um, That's why you wrecking. talk about food all the time, right, Claude? What are you, what are you having for dinner tonight? <laughs> Jason? Are you asking me another question? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I already, had a, I already had a fruit smoothie earlier. Okay, tell me about the fruit smoothie and use the gut. Use all your senses. Oh, you know, it was okay. made with fresh fruit. 
oh, we picked them off the trees in the backyard, right, in Canada in, in, in February, I'm sure. Um, well, you know, you know, you know what I do? I do just like Dairy Queen, and we, we freeze our bananas. And so I throw the bananas in, and I mix in some chocolate powder, and I mix in some peanut butter. And it's a, we call it a chocolate banana smoothie. And after it's done, I hold up the blender upside down like this so the kids can see that it's not coming out of the blender just like at Dairy Queen. And they just love that. And, and they just eat, they, got, they gobble it up like, okay. it, like it's candy. Okay. Somebody sell me on their dinner tonight and use the five senses. Go ahead. Make everybody else hungry. Let's see if you can do a little guts uh, hypnosis here. Well, what I had for dinner tonight was pizza. So all week long, I've been eating chicken, broccoli, you know, kind of eating pretty clean. And I thought, you know, tonight's Friday night, and I'm going to try to treat myself a little bit. So I wasn't able to get uh, one of the order pizzas. I had one of the frozen ones. So I said, I'm going to take this thing out, add a little bit of extra stuff to it. So threw some extra pepperonis on it, oh, a little extra sausages. <laughs> Oh, get, sausage. Get a, oh, yeah, baby. A extra stuff. So it, it looks like a custom pizza anyway, but it's like the whole time I'm making it, you know, I'm, I'm putting the, I'm just eating everything <laughs> off the pizza before it even gets into the oven. And it's just like your, your senses, your mouth has just come alive. Cause I, I like savory uh, sausages and, and, you know, a little spiciness in my pizza. And so just putting just the right amount of stuff on it. And what about the dough? Is it is it crunchy Ooh. dough or, or soft? It's, it's, well, I like I like it a little softer, so I added some extra cheese on it too, just to make it nice and gooey. So when it comes out, it's just kind of rolling out onto the pan. It just ah. Then I have this big pizza cutter about about this big, just rolling it. Just it, a lot of times when I eat pizza, it brings back memories. When I was a kid, I used to go to a local pizza joint. It was called Regina's. And that was where we hung out in high school. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's just kind of one of those little triggers for me. To did, you, did you open up a nice bottle of wine? With it? <laughs> what, what is better than some nice, a nice glass of California Chianti with it? <laughs> I'm not so much a wine. I like wine, but I'm more of a beer drinker when it comes to my pizza. Okay. It's, it's I, like, so I'm, I'm a big Corona fan. I like oh, my yeah. Coronas with I like to the squeeze beer, that the lime beer. in there. <laughs> the beer, not the disease. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think have they, have they had a dip in sales because they're because of their name? By the way, did that affect? I've, I've heard that, that, but it didn't. It didn't dip my sales. For a little bit. <laughs> For a little bit. That's a good kind. <laughs> oh yeah, I think Jason uh, Richter. Uh, he, he's talking about burgers here and, and he wants them right away. I, yeah, absolutely. Food. Who, anybody here ever watched the, why is food so sensual? Why is food, the food channel, one of the most popular channels, um, on YouTube, millions of hits on uh, the guys who do the food and travel and everything like that. How come, why is food so sensual? <clears throat> Because I think because you can it. touch it. Yeah, oh. you touch, taste, smell. Pleasure, pleasures of life. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is the, what, is, what are some of the best smells in the world that instantly make you hungry? Popcorn in a movie theater? <laughs> what is, popcorn does it bacon. for me. Bacon. Oh, bacon. Barbecue. <laughs> oh, bacon. Oh. Pot roast <laughs> in a house. It makes a house smell beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and gravy, and you dip the, and you have some fresh bread and everything like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, when, Puerto when Rican I, pork. My mom used to cook pot. It just brings me back to when I was a boy, because when you come into the house, you know mom's cooking, and it just smells so good. You you know it, it just fills the house with that love. You still remember it. Yeah, <laughs> a absolutely. And what? Uh, okay. And just to demonstrate a point, what was in everyone's mind when we went from popcorn to pot roast to sizzling bacon to fresh baked bread out of the oven to oh cookies, chocolate chip cookies in the in the out in the kitchen on a cold winter day? Oh, or soup, uh, yeah, really soup. good soup, yeah, or something soup. like that. What what what's gone? What was? It, did everyone have a picture in their mind? Absolutely. Do you think um, do you think that's why marketers do this? 
when they oh, yeah. um, absolutely, absolutely. How do you think we can utilize that in business when we talk to people? It's all about painting the picture. Yeah. You got to paint the picture for whatever you're trying to sell or acquire. Jason Richter says, Laura brought home two huge crab cakes, all jumbo lump, perfectly cooked, all crab meat and broccoli with butter sauce. Oh, garlic fried in butter. You ever smell that? Oh, my God. And a bottle of Cab Sav, Cabernet Sauvignon. Delicious. Melt in your mouth. You're having a good dinner, Jason. Why don't you join us? Uh, the thing about it is, if you can use the right words with the right picked story, and you can you can actually enter someone else's mind and paint that picture in their in their mind. So if we're talking about real estate, how would we? What would that sound like to somebody who needs a home and they're living in a little one bedroom apartment, or they're living with their in laws in the attic or anything? What kind of picture would you paint to those people if you were trying to sell them a nice home? If you were a realtor or an investor, you got a home to sell. A nice home has a backyard, grassy backyard for the kids. It's got a fireplace on a cold winter night. A nice, what would a, a nice kitchen with one of those little islands? I love those little islands where you can just lean against and eat a little cheese and drink a glass of wine and talk with friends and stuff. How would you how would you paint that? What would that sound like? Somebody go for it. I think for me, it, it invokes family gathering type situations. And if you're moving from a rental place where you have no control over anything, now you've got you got your own place and you paint your own picture. You know, you mentioned the, the counter. We used to have a kitchen up in uh, Vina, New Jersey, and it was a gathering place. We had the center counter, always had our food. Everybody was hanging around that counter all the time, um, you know, looking forward to being able to cook out. You can't cook out in an apartment. You can't put a, a grill out on the the little balconies. It's just the freedom to be able to do what you want and have a big gathering of people out in your yard. And, you know, if, if you happen to be a person that loves landscaping and doing outside work, you can't do that in an apartment or a rental. It's just not. So it's all about taking ownership of your space and, and having full control to do that. Would you use the word imagine? Or oh, always. Let's pretend. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, let's say, uh, you know, Nick, let's pretend for a moment we could get you into a nice house. And you strike me as a, you love having, you love the entertaining, don't you? You oh, like yeah. fa family. Can you imagine you're in the kitchen. There's some, there's a turkey or a roast in that oven and that smells coming through. And you and your friends are sitting around that island and you're, you're telling stories about school and you're all drinking a couple of brewskis and nibbling on some of your favorite cheese and crackers. And the fireplace is going in the living room. It's a cold, windy, nasty night, but inside it's warm. You feel everybody's comfortable and everything like that. And you're laughing and eating and all those good smells coming out of the kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. do, you, do you think you deserve something like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That creates memories for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, is this something do you want to make this? I have that property available right now. Do we want to make it happen or should I leave you alone and send you back to your at uh, your grandmother's attic? <laughs> I think we need to make this happen somehow. <laughs> Mind if we talk about money for a moment? Yeah, let's let's discuss those options. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, and we get this thing done and you and your lovely bride, you can get snuggle with a nice blanket in front of the fireplace and you're sipping a cognac and just you're just comfortable and serene. And well, can you imagine yourself that comfortable and warm and relaxed in your own place? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that fireplace is just going so nice and everything. Not a care in the world. and You're just comfortable and secure. Like being a mama's womb, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what you're describing, the American dream. We've always called it the American dream. There's so many people that come to our country dreaming of that American dream. Being able to have your own little place that you can say it's your own. That's that's a big sales ticket item, you know. You you're giving people peace of mind. They feel like when they own something like that. That's that's the pinnacle of, of of being able to bring your family together. So I, I think uh, you know you're always touching home. That's a very sensitive area for everyone. 
And Jason, my Canadian, when we say American dream, we mean the continent, not the country. Yeah. <laughs> Canadians are very sensitive about this, right? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or do they call it the Canadian dream, Jason? <laughs> Well, we are the 51st state, so we don't, you know, the apple doesn't He said it, not tree. me. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> what else here? Jason's Jason's using my uh, Guts 2.0 here. I just put in a pan of dark chocolate brownies with Godiva chips. I added an extra <laughs> egg, which makes them more cake-like, super moist and delicious. Oh, you're making me hungry now, Jason. <laughs> what else do you have? I'm having trouble with StreamYard. Sorry, I can't join you. Okay, sorry. We're going to go back to uh, Zoom. I think this is our last week on StreamYard, or we might go back to Zoom and start uh, streaming from there. I uh, Zoom just works so much better for me. Mm. Um, absol absolutely. So what we're talking about food. We're talking about houses with fireplaces and sipping cognac in front of the fireplace and, and all this stuff. If you just give somebody, and that's an emotion, that's also emotional selling too, and mm -hmm. it's using the power of suggestion. Some people, like yours truly here, I am so susceptible to that kind of selling. Man, you you tell me about a juicy steak on the grill with shrimp and baked potato with those stuff. Man, that's what I'm having for, for dinner tonight. I'm going to drive my wife crazy if I... I'm the easiest guy in the world to sell, but nobody knows how to sell me. They're always giving me features and benefits. Okay. If you wanted to sell me a, uh, um, a Corvette, okay, and you start telling me about the, uh, the horsepower and everything, that won't work for me. But if you tell me, man, Claude, you're going to go down there with your with your sweetheart, the top down. It's going to be a warm summer day. You're driving. Your hair is the the hair is flowing. You got your shades on, man. You know, <laughs> you're munching you're on some. Cool. <laughs> now, now you, you got me. Or you, you're talking about, gee, you know, that car. You pull up in that car. That makes a statement about who you are. You think your neighbors will be envious of you? You know, they're driving a station wagon. You're in a two-seater Cor Corvette or what in business. What does that say to your prospects, your customers, when you drive a car like that? We're in a materialistic country, aren't we? That's right. Isn't Six everything – you guys who live in California, what – it doesn't matter where you live, but it sure matters what you drive, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only thing is a Lamborghini sits in the same gridlock traffic as the Hyundai. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's right. Matter. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's really true. Who said the American dream before? What is that? Does it still exist? Yeah, I, I mentioned it as being the American dream because you, you hear so much about it in, in our culture. Uh, and people come to this country, they – and you see many people come to this country with practically uh, nothing, but their dream is to be able to own their own home and uh, have a, a safe place for their family. And so I think that's something that everybody achieves or, or tries to achieve when they come. Why do immigrants do, this is going to get, I don't want it to get political, but why, yeah. why do you think immigrants do so well in usually one or two generations? Why do, why do immigrants um, do so well sometimes in this country. I think when they come here, they don't see anything but opportunity. Right. Sometimes they're coming from maybe even a third world country situation where, you mm -hmm. know, their their richest people in those countries sometimes are our bottom men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. you come over here, they just feel like they got the sky's the limit. You know, my wife is a perfect example of that. You know, coming from Puerto Rico at the age of 21, mm -hmm. couldn't speak the language, you know, within just a mm -hmm. few short years, learned a language, bought her own home. You know, she it was just something she was she was driven to get that done. Mm. It's interesting. So is the American dream still alive or is it gone? I think it's there with obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> just got to learn, learn a different way. I mean, regulations don't help. Um, 
I, I think with the with the internet like it is now, if you want to learn something, you can learn it. It's it's out there. Somebody's experienced it, taught it. it, it you know, it's just like it, all you have to do is be a good uh, observer and be able to look up things. <laughs> I think it's I think there's actually greater opportunity today than I've ever seen in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Am I wearing rose-colored glasses here or what? I think the opportunities are there. Um, I just think sometimes, and I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes our mindset is we're still stuck. We're still stuck. We think we can't. That nothing's getting better. And politics, of course, have gone crazy. And, so a lot of people feel a little destitute right now. Yeah, forget but, about the politics and the politicians. I, I, I you know, yeah. I, I don't. I can't even. I'm I'm taking a, a sabbatical from the news for a while. I can't I can't listen to these. Are those are those people? Are we becoming smarter, working real people like us in this room, or are they becoming stupider? You know. <laughs> It, it, it's it's just amazing the things you hear out of washington right left up down it's just so oh, no. damn dumb i think what most people want to do is work and pay their bills and put food on the table you know mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not worried you know and they 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 obey the law they they're they're pretty uh they're pretty mm -hmm. um decent people i at least people i know in my circle and things like that i think today with the internet um you know, when I was a kid and grew up, it was always about retail businesses. My dad came to this country. I'm the ch I'm a son of immigrants. Um, the first thing, my father didn't speak the language or anything. The first thing he did, uh, he went to night school. He learned English and he opened up a little grocery store in Manhattan, little bodega, little grocery store. And uh, man, we weren't uh, we weren't rich, we weren't poor, but we, you know, we always uh, we always had food on the table and everything. Mm -hmm. I, and today, can anyone can anyone start a business from home? Can anybody, if they have the sales skills, can anybody start a business? Yes, uh, selling a product or a service. I have no overhead sure. in my business. I have an inform. I have a real estate business that grew into an information business. And, uh, you know, we went from where I used to run ads in newspapers. This was before your time, guys, in newspapers. Okay. <laughs> Magazines and things. Okay. I still read the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. The New York Times has become basically, I think it's printed in Russia now, Pravda or something. But <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> but I don't even know politics. <laughs> but, um, I, I, all I, have, I have really good Wi-Fi. I have a very, I get a good computer every couple of years. I do my online marketing. I believe in attraction marketing. People contact me. Jason and I were talking about this today. I, I'd rather have four or five warm leads to talk to, to a day than text or email or, or postal mail that hundreds or thousands of people every day who don't want to hear from me. I, I kind of like reverse engineer my marketing where I like where people can contact me. Mm. And as long as you, and long as I have a product or a service that I think is good value, that's honest. Um, and I talk to enough people. And today when we talk to people, remember we used to get on cars and airplanes to go see customers. I don't do that. I used to do that like crazy. I used to draw, I used to drive thousands of miles a year. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I don't, you know, I used to get on airplanes to meet customers. I, everything is done on from Skype to FaceTime to Zoom now, even before the pandemic. Right. So if you can talk to that many people, we have these great devices. I mean, look at this. We're all over the country here and even right. other countries. Right. I mean, that, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. That's pretty cool. Anybody want the last word? Because I have to go uh, dinners on. Stuff pepper night. Oh man, go Kansas City! <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> go Kansas City! Huh? Go Tampa! Are 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 how many seats are they selling in the Super Bowl this year? I mean, it, I, don't, I don't know. Probably what, less than half. <laughs> a, good, a good stadium holds what 60, 70,000 people. Yeah, at least. 
So it's probably less so than half, right? Less than half. Probably. Just, yeah, and, selling, uh, and selling $10, $12 beers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a small yeah, they're, cup. Not, they're not making as much as they used to because of the pandemic. Who likes stadium? Who likes those nachos at the stadium? What do they do? They're so good. Oh, God. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, I got to go, everybody. Thanks for joining Beer with Claude. Um, you, Claude. Nobody deserves success more than you. Have a good, safe weekend. Stay away from avalanche areas. Guys. Yes. <laughs> good night. <Thank> <laughs> Absolutely. Take care, everybody. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Bye-bye.